shown we've had significant impact on students' learning, engagement, but also their own, our own practice as um, uh, basically our own professional development as teachers. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in this presentation, I will discuss what you know cooperative learning is, and then briefly show what an impact um, cooperative learning has had. But most importantly, um, this evidence is in, from informed research as part of a longitudinal collaboration with the University of Bedfordshire, and our findings are actually valid and reliable. <coughs> so, looking towards the future, we need to prepare pupils for the future. Um, basically, we're finding that pupils' participation in society uh, and for college, you know, something that actually needs to be looked at a little bit more, and actually how they, you know, present themselves um, through just court, um, communication and things like that. Basically, we found that in our system currently, it seems that there is a problem of how pupils prepare each other for the future. Um, we can develop their academic skills and their knowledge, but their ability to communicate this and work in team sports is actually quite limited. <coughs> um, Ofsted currently are encouraging student-centered approaches, but how often do we actually you know, do this? Um, Teacher-led sessions with just student-centered tasks tends to be the absolute norm at the moment. Um, when you're in your lessons, how, how, how often is it that we have a student-centered approach wholeheartedly? You know, how often do you actually just stand in front of a class and just give a demo and then just get the students to actually copy you? <laughs> so, what we actually have is cooperative learning. Um, this is a fully student-centered approach and it focuses purely on academic and social learning outcomes. And me and myself in the department have an opinion that is a better model than sport ed um, because of the structure that it offers the students. Um, Johnson & Johnson recently suggested that over a thousand studies have been conducted in the last 20 years alone and suggest that this is an effective approach to teaching and learning. Okay, it can be defined as students working together in small groups enough so that everyone can, pa can participate on a clearly assigned collective task. Students are expected to carry out the, a task without direct and immediate teacher supervisation. Cooperative learning can also be defined as groups are created to allow students to work together to maximise their own and each other's learning. But the, they basically, the structure needs and the groups need to be carefully selected. Basically, the whole idea of cooperative learning is that all students sink and swim together. So, in order for there to be a full cooperative learning lessons, there are things that are called non-negotiables that need to be implemented into the lesson. You also may know, the, know these as um, elements. So, basically, the first non-negotiable, okay, is mixed groups. Okay, and students must work in teams of four to five, uh, mixed gender ability friendship groups for the duration of the unit. So, there can't be any swapping around. They must stay in those groups for the whole entire unit. Okay, also we have group goal, okay, just like a learning objective, students together must work together to achieve a common goal. This can be physical, cognitive, social and emotional goal. Okay, there's also teacher as a facilitator. Um, by using open-ended questions, the teacher supports the group and works through challenges and understanding. It's important to allow pupils to make mistakes and if they have mistakes, they are more likely to overcome these problems. Uh, if you allow them to solve them themselves, okay? I know this is really quite a difficult thing to do to begin with, but instead of jumping on the students straight away and you allow them to work through the mistakes, you'll actually find that the students learn more, okay? So instead of just jumping on them for the sake of a good flowing lesson, you can just allow them to make those mistakes because they will learn more, okay? We also have positive interdependence. Okay, students are dependent on each other as group members and contribute towards a task in order to complete the group the group goal. So basically, this is them sinking or swimming together. Okay, so we have individual accountability. Students are assessed on their contribution uh, to group work or a performance. Okay, it's important that the pupils are accountable for an aspect of their own group work. Right, it is common, and we found that. Um, pupils will sit back and can allow others to, you know, do all the work. And we've also called these kind of social loafers, which um, the pupils will sit back and allow themselves to be carried. 
We've also found that there are often pupils who are the ones that take over and allow other students not to have input. And I think it's really important to try and rid the group work of these two occurrences, if possible. Uh, promoting face-to-face -face interaction, okay? Um, pupils will often find this aspect really quite difficult. And once you put them in groups where they aren't working together within their friendship groups, for example, you find that they actually find it really difficult to hold conversations face to face for a really long time. And they will actually shy away from this. But if you force them together in a group and you make sure that they are actually looking at each other face to face, you can find that their self-confidence will actually grow and that will actually have a fantastic impact on your students. Okay, there's also group processing. Group processing at the end of the lesson or during the lesson as mini plenaries, okay, can have allow the students to have time to reflect together as a group on what they've learned and what they need to do to in order to improve the group work. Allowing the pupils to identify their problems and not just pass off and not to just give them the time to actually think about what they're doing. It'll allow them the time to put right any mistakes that they've made in the lesson and will also be allow them to create a plan for the next lesson in order for them not to make the same mistakes again. And finally, you must use a cooperative learning structure. And there are lots of these out there. Um, but the main ones that we've currently been using at the Buckingham School has been a validated structure, for example, uh, Jigsaw or Pairs Check Perform or Learning Teams. Um, there are lots and lots out there and I would encourage you to go and look if you are um, going to use them to go further and do your own research on those. So basically our findings and impact that we've had upon our students, okay, um, we've actually been able to show significant increase in students' physical, cognitive and social emotional learning in comparison to any traditional method that we've used in the past. We found that the, co uh, the confidence of the pupils have, has grown massively, uh, that we've had higher engagement levels, especially among those pupils who have been dis disaffected or disengaged with their learning. Um, the massive thing that I found was I, I was taking girls for football on a very, very muddy winter and the girls were actually jogging themselves down to the lesson and weren't having to be chased out of change rooms. They were down there and working really well straight away. And we've also found that you know pupils are willing to now work with anyone in the groups. Okay, we've had a real breakdown of the clicks uh, in the lessons, and basically you can see the students now talking to any different people around the school, um, and they're now willing to work with anyone. And this has also gone into other subjects as well. What I've done recently was I asked my department, you know, what would they think the main benefits of using cooperative learning? Um, from myself, from my point of view, uh, I would believe that cooperative learning actually hits all key processes um, from development of skills, pupils making and applying decisions, mental determination, evaluating and improving, and taking on of different roles is all apparent in um, a cooperative learning lesson. Andy Mins, okay, uh, is a big believer that the uh, improved communication also goes into other lessons and he has also seen a massive improvement with students going into sixth form and those pupils leaving the school. Um, Vicky Scholes um, believes it and has shown that all pupils are able to make progress in her lessons. Uh, pupils are now more mature and she has also found that they are far more switched on and ready to learn when they come into the lesson. And Head of Department Lee Churchwood has also found that it makes changes from the bog standard PE lesson where you know he used to give demonstrations or um, just give them instructions instead of just standing at the front of class he's basically created 30 teachers in a classroom that are now can teach each other. Okay and I also which was really important I think was to get student feedback about how they feel this um, learning structure has worked. And you've also found, when I asked them, that they find it a lot, lot easier to understand topics from when they're learning from their friends. Um, they don't feel like they're being lectured. They felt it is more fun. And basically, they used to. a few of them said they used to feel that they were quite rubbish at PE. And now they feel that they fit into the class and they have a lot, lot more confidence. And they've also gone on to say that they felt it's improved their teamwork and their own ability to do things. Uh, and basically, they felt a lot more challenged and they now work with a lot more different people than they used to. I think there's a really different, um, important thing to uh, um, add in here is that we've recently gone through our observation cycle at the school and all teachers actually in the subject or outside of a subject who have used cooperative learning have actually all come out with an outstanding grade. 
Um, we're actually a fully believer, if you look at the new Ofsted framework for um, observation cycles, that CL, or cooperative learning, actually ticks all the boxes for an outstanding lesson. Okay, as due to the fact that it is a purely student-centered approach to learning, that you know all pupils are actually active during the lesson, and they are actually able to have an impact upon their learning. Another really important thing that this school has gone through recently um, with actually doing the informed research is that we've recently been published in PE Matters Journal. Um, and if you're interested in reading our copy of our top tips for using cooperative learning in a secondary school, um, you can find that on my Twitter page or the Buck CL Buddy Twitter page or even uh, Vicky Goodyear's Twitter page who we've been working with. Um, and 